I'd like to show you three completely unrelated items. First, an oil can. Next, Sophia Loren, beautiful motion picture star of the screen. And next, a $10,000 check. Now, these three items play an important part in telling the story of a fantastic chance for a gas station attendant to become a movie star. You'll see it happen tonight on People Are Funny. People are funny. Ooh, people are funny. Brought to you by new even waving Tony. With the first double easy applicator. And new white rain, the first and only crystal clear liquid shampoo. And sorry, part. Four weeks ago tonight, ladies and gentlemen, a young service station man named Roger Dollarhide was selected to be on our program right here in Hollywood. He'd spent two fruitless years trying to get his first break. So we decided to give this young man an opportunity. So we offered him a United Artist movie contract guaranteeing him $10,000 in cash if he could pass a few little tests. Now here, was his first movie test with a beautiful leading lady. Well, Roger failed uh, slightly in that test, so I could only give him a quarter of the movie contract, and I decided to send him for further instructions to the famous star, Mr. John Wayne. Now, when we telephoned Mr. Wayne, he wasn't home. He'd gone to Tokyo, Japan. And so, undaunted, we sent Roger Dollarhide all the way across the Pacific to Tokyo, and there, three weeks ago, he undertook instructions from Mr. John Wayne. I love you. No, Roger, I'm afraid you're not quite ready. We discovered he still wasn't quite ready for movies. So John Wayne only gave him another quarter of this $10,000 contract and sent him for further instruction on around the world. Hong Kong, Singapore, Beirut, Athens, Rome, to London, all the way to London, England, and there he met the beautiful movie star, Miss Sophia Loren, and there she was his teacher. Well, as a beginner, I know I have a lot to learn. Oh, yes, I can give you only the 25% of the contract. Is that all right? Now, apparently, he was just good enough to win another quarter of the contract there. So, Sophia sent him to Africa. And there, he was to meet Rosanna Brazzi, who played the part of the commander in the picture with John Wayne and Sophia Loren, the exciting picture, The Legend of the Lost. And what a lulu of a movie this is. It's full of action and interest. So let's see if young Roger Dollarhide got the last part of the contract guaranteeing him $10,000. Of course, you are no John Wayne, but uh, here is the rest of your contract. A zoot. I forgot. Rosanna Brazzi has the contract. He will give it to you with uh, $10,000 that go with it. But where's Mr. Brazzi? Where are all the actors when they are through with the picture? In Hollywood, of course. Goodbye. Well, the poor boy still has only three-fourths of his contract. And so, no $10,000. You want to know where he is now? He's back in Hollywood, and I want you to meet this young man who went from his service station around the world, Roger Dollarhide. Hello, Roger. Well, you look like a typical tourist loaded down with the mementos of your trip around the world and still wearing the fez that we gave you when you left. Well, now, this is a present for you. This isn't my memento. This is from KLM Dutch Airlines. And when I left Tokyo, you know, in order to give me a good send-off. They gave me this doll and said, bring it back to you and turn it over to you. I've always wanted to have a little Japanese doll. <laughs> I had something a little larger in mind, but this will do. Well, that's beautiful and represents their delightful and delicate work. Now, uh, would you take this, please? <clears throat> Hold it for a moment for me. Roger, you've been all over the world trying to get that United Artists movie contract and the $10,000 that goes with it. 
I see you have it kind of glued together. There's still a piece of it missing there. How do you feel generally from your trip? You had a good time? Well, it was a great trip. It was very tiring, I can tell you. You've you never been anywhere before, and well, suddenly we took you. Yeah, it's, it's sort of hard, you know, jumping from place to place, and you get used to one place and you're to the next. I was very impressed, though, all the way around, especially by Japan. But you did have a, an exciting trip from Tokyo to London. You saw all these famous towns. Well, we, I was in Tokyo, I was in Manila, in Bangkok, Rangoon, and Beirut. I was in uh, Karachi, and in Rome, Amsterdam, London, and in and around London a great deal, and in and around Tokyo a great yeah, deal, too. Uh -huh. Sophia Lauren was very nice to you, wasn't she? Well, she was very nice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we didn't get everything on film. Roger? From Sophia Lauren, of course, you went to Africa, and there you were to collect the last quarter of this contract, but you didn't do it. What happened? You, did, you were supposed to get it from Rosanna Brazzi. Well, he wasn't there. Oh, well, he wasn't there. Well, they said they sent me back here, as a matter of fact. They said that, that I'd have to come back to Hollywood. Oh, I see. Well, let me see this contract. We'll find out just exactly. This is a very rare document. There's a paragraph on the bottom of the last part that you can see here that's written in Arabic. And that's most unusual in a motion picture contract. But we uh, will try to find somebody in our studio audience who can read Arabic. Is there anyone here, ladies and gentlemen, who can read Arabic? Can I see your hand, please? Oh, there's a gentleman right over there. Would you... Why, it's Rosanna Brazzi, the Italian movie star. Would you come up, Mr. Brazzi? How do you do? Would you come in here and meet young Mr. Roger Dollarhide? How do you do? This is the man you went to Africa to see. You wasted the trip. You see, he was waiting here all the time. <laughs> did, you, did you pass uh, through Rome? Briefly. Oh, did you see my parents over there? I missed them, I'm afraid. You they, missed them. They wouldn't let me out of customs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think since Roger Dollarhide is a young man aspiring to be an actor, it would be rather inspiring to learn how you became a, an actor and a star. Oh, it's, uh, it's very strange because before to be an actor, I think I was a very, very serious person. I was a lawyer. Oh, studied law and was practicing law. That's right. You came to Hollywood <clears throat> a few years ago, made uh, three coins in a fountain, then you were in the famous South Pacific um, musical, which was made in Hawaii, and then, of course, The Legend of the Lost with John Wayne and Sophia Loren. Exactly. Well, your career is going full steam. I doubt if you'll ever be a lawyer again. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> Roger, you see how it's done? You're starting wrong. The first thing is to go back to school and be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Mr. Brazzi, we have the problem <clears throat> of getting this young man the last part of his contract. Now, would you uh, give him any advice on how he can get his $10,000? posso dire in italiano, io mi manca l'altro pezzo del del contratto e non so come fare. Did you get that? Well, I don't understand Italian. You don't understand Italian? Well, no wonder your career has been going nowhere. An actor must speak several languages, and particularly the romantic languages. Mr. Brazzi, could you teach him a little practical Italian in a few moments? Well, it's very easy, you know, when you speak Italian, move your hands, you know. <laughs> Everybody understands you. And, uh, and oh, I, I mean, if you go back to Rome, if you go back to Italy, I really think that you need uh, to say, ti amo. Ti amo. Ti amo. Ti amo. Is that a practical? Uh, a, a little lower. Ti amo. Ti amo. Very good. Is that practical? Is that a practical? Oh, it means I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Say it now. Ti amo. Good. Uh, he picks it up very fast. Now, would you say that he's ready to start on this last part of his contract? Yeah, I think he is. Well, then, uh, shall we give him this last quarter here? No. You don't I have it. See, I, I don't have it, you know, but uh, I, I think, you know, that we can find out from here. It's Let an me Arabic. see. No, no. He, Oh, he has to go back. He has to go to the pyramid, he says here. The pyramid. The pyramid, yes. Roger. Yes, he has to go Off there. Off to Egypt. I'm sorry, but... Uh... How is... <laughs> From Africa, you came all the way here, and now he says you're going... Are you sure you have that right, Rosanna? I don't know. It's written here. You know, it's very, very difficult for me to... No, no, wait a moment. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. Oh. I'm always wrong. <laughs> now, let me see. No, no, here. Here is written something... Uh, Arabic, you say? Arabic? Arabic is uh, Ayalex. Ayalex? That, that means uh, holy. 
Here is uh, hashab, wood means. And here is uh, karem, and it means vine. Sure you have it, look. This is the pyramid, Hollywood, and vine. Pyramid what? Sure, the, 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 the mortgage company. The pyramid, the pyramid mortgage. mortgage company. I think it's here on the corner, no? Oh, you don't go to Egypt. You go no, to the just... pyramid mortgages up the street, two that's blocks. Right. And, and, he that's, gets his and that's where he gets his contract. Rosanna Brazzi, thank you for this help. Please. <laughs> and you, you've taught him how to make love in Italian. Yeah. You've given him the instructions to Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. And an inspiration of your own career to, to spur him on. Good. Would you go with him in case they try to foreclose his mortgage when he gets up there? For sure. Can't be All right. Boy. Back to get your contract okay. and come back before the end of the program. There he goes. If you knew that one product was twice as good as another, you'd buy that product, wouldn't you? Well, get yourself some new crystal clear white rain because it rinses twice as clean as any other leading shampoo. And here's why. It's new, pure, contains no artificial coloring, no thick, hard to rinse oil. No wonder it rinses twice as clean as any other leading shampoo. Leaves hair fresh, bright, lively as sea spray. Well, gals, it makes sense, doesn't it? To use the shampoo that rinses twice as clean as any other leading shampoo, and that's new, crystal clear, white rain. The difference is clear. <laughs> operator, operator, you gave me the wrong number. Now, would you please return my dime right away? I'd like my dime, please. <laughs> operator, you returned about $3,000. I just wanted a dime. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't that be a thrill to have that happen to you sometime at a payphone? Actually, it was just a device we used on People Are Funny to introduce the subject of money. The money tonight amounts in aggregate to $3,000. And we love to give it away to somebody. We've selected a teenager, a young lady who last week earned a thousand dollars which she chose to trade in for a chance at three thousand and her name is miss barbara morris let's give her a welcome back to the show <laughs> barbara's a pretty little brunette age 15 who goes to what school was it Van Nuys high you're a senior there are you uh, no i'm not in the 18th 18th yeah that's and right and you're going to major in what what are you interested in and how making you a good cook well, no, I'm not. Well, you're just learning to be. That's right. Uh -huh. Now, are you interested in boys? Yes, I am. Do you go steady? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it uh, all the kids are going steady these days at the age of 14 or 15, aren't they? Uh, that's right. How old were you when you first went steady? Uh, 13. And are you still going with the same fellow? Uh, no, I'm not. You've gone steady probably eight or ten times since then? Well, not quite that much. But... How long do you average with a steady fellow? About two months. <laughs> Real constant and loyal type girl. <laughs> Barbara, the reason I'm asking you about this romance is that tonight's telephone call uh, is about romance. Now, in a moment or two, you're going to call a stranger that you've never dreamed about talking to somewhere in the United States. We have um, all these cities listed, about 150, and if you can call a stranger on that phone and keep him on the phone for three minutes, you get $3,000 in cash on your way to ten thousand dollars <coughs> any questions no there isn't all right pat bring in the little bucket and we'll let the young lady select the city in the united states would you tell us what it is milwaukee and what number is it 48 there's milwaukee up there by the salton sea <laughs> well there's something there a great lake of some kind or another and uh, now, let's sit down here for a moment while Pat gets the telephone book and we get ready to make a long distance phone call to Milwaukee. Now, Barbara, what is the subject that you must discuss, which we told you about so you could be thinking? Well, I have to ask the people um, to help me on writing a love letter. That's right. Now, Barbara, you're gonna make the call. Pat, bring in the phone book. 
This is the uh, Milwaukee and vicinity, Wisconsin. Well, now, Barbara, open up the phone book to any page you want. You got the H's. And here, you want to pick a man, Donald Huffer. You can say, Huffer, this is Puffer. <laughs> now, dial 414. 414. Now, what's the number? O R. Orchard. 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 I hope he's not a crab apple. <laughs> One, four, three, eight, five. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Huffer? Could you speak louder? Hello, Mrs. Huffer? Oh, just a minute. You don't ask how it is. Start talking. Hello, uh, my name is Barbara Moy. Anybody there? Just a minute. What'd you say, ma'am? I said, hello, my name is Barbara Moy. And I was wondering if you'd be so kind as to help me because I, I'm in an awful mess. I'm trying to write this letter to my boyfriend and there's no one around here to help me. So, And I can't call up and ask my friends because they just make fun of me. So I was just wondering if you could help me. I've already got the, the heading of the letter. I've got Dear John and John Darling and Dear Honey, but I don't know which uh, one to choose from. I don't want this to sound too mushy. Have you ever written a love letter? <laughs> hey, this isn't a joke or anything. It's a recording, young lady. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. I've had that buzz a beep in my phone all the time. I've called up the operator and everything, and they still haven't gotten it off. I don't know what it is. It just goes beep, beep all the time. No, I've heard those recordings before, young lady. I know it sounds like a recording. I said every time I call somebody, they say that. That's why I've called the operator. And I've told her, and she hasn't done anything about it. She hasn't sent anybody out about it. It just happens all the time, and everybody accuses me of recording them. And I'm not. So could you please help me? Have you ever written a letter or a love letter before to anyone? Because this is, I have to get this letter out by tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you, young lady, I'm out of hand. I haven't did that for a good many years. Well, you can, you can tell me how to I'd start this. I have to call in my young boy here. He's well, that age. Well, I'm so, well, I'm still. I. One minute for 3,000 bucks. Hello? Hello. Uh, my name is Barbara Morris, and I was just wondering, have you ever written a love letter? A what? A love letter. L-O-V-E. No. Love letter. Haven't you? Well, well, maybe you can help me. Has oh. anybody ever written a love letter to you? No. They haven't. Well, well see, I'm writing this, this love letter to this to my boyfriend, but I don't want this to sound too messy. So do you think if I started off, dear John, that that would sound too plain, or dear honey, or, or darling, or how do you think I should start it? Well, I wouldn't know. Well, how old are you? 14. You're 14? Well, see, I'm 15, see, so you must be able to help me. How would you, how would you like a girl to write you a love letter? Would you like to say, by the way, what is your name? Oh, that I cannot tell you. Why can't you? Huh? I'm not going to write you a letter. <laughs> I don't want to get a letter. Uh, say, young man, what you, uh, uh, this is Art Linkletter calling from Hollywood. Do you know who I am? Uh, yes, I've seen your program. Well, now, uh, I'm calling from Hollywood, so I want to uh, speak to your dad again. Can you put him on? Okay. i uh, just Hello. Mr. Huffer. Right. This is Art Linkletter calling from Hollywood. How do you do, sir? Good evening. You a little surprised to get this call? I sure am. Well, we picked a young lady out of our audience and uh, wanted to see if somebody talked to her about writing a love letter for three minutes. And we did, huh? You did it. <laughs> but, but I want to tell you, you didn't give her much help. I recognized the recording. But you didn't know what it was for, though, did you? I didn't know what it was for, and I wasn't sticking my neck out. <laughs> I can see that you're the kind of a guy who never wrote a love letter for the same reason, eh? Well, I wouldn't say that. I've been married for 17 years. <laughs> Mr. Humphrey, we're going to send you $1,000 cash from People Are Funny. Are you kidding? 
sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But we're going to do it. This young lady just won 3000 uh, What business are you in, sir? I am a police officer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, no wonder you recognize the beep on the line. Well, I guess you can use a thousand bucks, can't you? I sure could. You got a family and probably uh, uh, haven't been able to do a couple of things you'd like to do on a policeman's salary. I also have a child with muscular dystrophy I could help with it. Well, that's something that we're delighted to be able to help you out with. So the thousand dollars is coming to you, Donald Huffer, and thanks for being so polite and nice to our 15-year-old miss on the phone. You'll be hearing from us very shortly. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Thank you. Well, Buck, you had a kind of a lucky break tonight. You had a very indulgent, nice man who was a policeman back there in Milwaukee. And you get the $3,000, unless you would like to come back next week and try for six. Now, you don't have to take the 3000 and run like a rabbit. But if you come back next week, we have a whole different subject for you. You might call, I don't know, any place in the United States. They might get another thousand. If you do come back next week and, and lose the money, at least we'll have a nice consolation prize of a magnificent Magnavox colored television set for the finest reproduction of sight and sound. But you don't have to come back. If you want to, you can take the money. It's up to you. Well, I think I'd like to come back to try for the $6,000. We'll have a good subject to you next week. So in the meantime, practice up on your telephone calls, and we'll see you. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. This is new, even waving Tony, and this is new, even waving Tony, the most even wave ever. You just can't overwave or underwave with Tony's new, even waving lotion, and this new double easy applicator. Tony's applicator waves and neutralizes, too. Look, easy, even waving with the wide sponge top. No combing, no dripping. Easy, even neutralizing, too. Eight spray tips neutralize inside the curl. Yes, you can't underwave or overwave. You get even waves every time. No stragglers, no frizz. So you try this new, even way to wave. You get the new, even waving Tony with the double easy applicator. At the beginning of the show, we sent a young service station man who wants to be a movie star on the last leg of a desperate journey which has taken him around the world. Mr. Roger uh, Dollarhide was sent up to the corner of Hollywood and Vine to the Pyramid Mortgage Company to see if he could find a missing piece, the last part of a contract that could bring him $10,000 in cash. Now, is Roger Dollarhide here, please? Let's bring him out. Roger? Now, oh, where's, the, uh, where's Rosanna Brasi? Well, they were playing Legend of the Lost on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> he stopped in to watch the picture. Oh, fine. He wants to see himself in the movie. Well, I don't blame him. It's a good movie. And you went on to the Pyramid Mortgage Company. Yes. And you got the rest of your contract, and you're going to get the $10,000. No. What happened? They were closed. They were closed? Well, wasn't there a notice or well, anything? There, there was this note stuck in the door. This little note says it's in the bush. It's in the bush. That's all it says. And this was under the door of the pyramid company. It's in the bush. Yes. This, re oh, I recall now, this refers back to the fact that before you went to Japan, four weeks ago, I asked you if you wanted $1,000 in the hand or $10,000 in the bush. And you said 10000 in the bush. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. All right. You've now come clear circle around to the same state. Do you see any bush? Huh? It's in plain sight. Do you see a bush? No, sir. It's in plain sight right now because everybody can see it. The bush we refer to is a tar bush. And a tar bush is another name for a fez. And you were wearing the fez ever since you left here four weeks ago. So we said $10,000 in the bush. Let's take a look. There ought to be a thread here. Take the lining out. 
you were carrying the contract with you all the way around the world. And that is the United Artists contract. And here is a check to Roger Dollarhide for $10,000 in cash. Wow. Roger. Now, how do you feel? There it goes. About the happiest person in the whole world. Roger, you got a United Artists contract. You got $10,000. No more service station for you. You're a good-looking young man with lots of promise. You've had fun meeting John Wayne, Sophia Loren, Rosanna Brazzi, going to a fort in Africa, and going all over the world. You took a KLM Royal Dutch Airlines Constellation for the finest in overseas flying. So we're happy that you proved that people are funny around the world. Good luck to you, Roger. We'll be hearing more from you. Well, that puts another show to bed, and if my memory serves me right, this is the 16th show of the 16th year of People Are Funny. You know, speaking of memory, in a moment I'm going to be back to show you, uh, uh, let's see, what is it I'm going to show you? I had it right on the tip of my memory. Oh, yes, I remember now. It's a surefire way to remember anything. I use it myself. You ladies sure get a break with today's fine cosmetics. They stay on better, last longer, but of course, they're much harder to remove. And that's why you need Deep Magic, the one facial cleanser that's made to remove modern cosmetics. Deep Magic by Tony. Gently dissolves dirt and makeup, cleans deep down where soaps and creams can't reach. So wear makeup, but remove it with Deep Magic, the facial cleanser made to remove modern cosmetics. Now, during this once a year special, you can get two 60 cent bottles, that's a dollar 20 value, for only 89 cents. Deep Magic. Right there. A string around the finger is the oldest, most popular memory aid in the history of mankind. Matter of fact, I have a lot of things to remember, like, uh, I can't remember why I put them on there. Well, anyway, that's the old-fashioned way. Next week, we'll show you how hypnotism works to aid your memory. And you don't have to tie the hypnotist around your finger, either. Be with us for the fun. Good night. in, predictable to the minute. You know, you can set your watch by the rise and fall of the tide. Simple, isn't it? Makes me wonder sometimes if maybe we don't let things get a little too complicated. Take cigarettes, for instance. With all the new brands today, all the new fads and fancy stuff, Camel still give you more of what you want in a cigarette. Fine tobacco flavor, good mild smoking. It's a real cigarette. Most popular of all. Try them. You see what I mean? People of Funny has been brought to you by the Tony Company.